The Kima Boardwalk is a beautiful place to spend an evening while eating at your favorite Landry's restaurant or trying a new restaurant in the large group of restaurants. But the real enjoyment of this boardwalk is the various rides, from family rides to thrill rides and the second largest wooden roller coaster in Texas. But how do these attractions stack up? And is it worth visiting the Kima Boardwalk to experience these rides? Find out my top 10 attractions at the Kima Boardwalk. I was unable to ride a few rides. The Ferris wheel, as many do, bans single riders. So I was not able to ride it. Aviator and Boardwalk Tower were also closed on my visit, which was a bummer since they likely would have made this list. I also did not try the three upcharge attractions, Boardwalk Beast, Iron Eagle, and Stingray Reef, since I'm cheap. Number 10, Wonder Wheel. This is a basic small kitty ferris wheel. However, adults are free to ride this without a child and by themselves, so I was able to enjoy it. The views of the swinging ship were nice though the views of the water are slightly obstructed by the side of the gondola. With the attraction lineup present, this list had to start somewhere. Though ironically, it started with the same type of ride as my top 10 rides at Yo-Yo Land, though I liked their mini ferris wheel more. Number 9, Carousel. I normally really like carousels as true staples of an amusement park. As a beautiful double-decker carousel, this is a fine family attraction. However, there is a weight limit of 160 pounds to ride on the horses, so I had to be content just sitting in a seat since I was too big. Especially since I already got mad at Landry's Downtown Aquarium for making me squeeze into the carousel seatbelt, I am just annoyed that somehow a carousel is now labeled a kitty ride. Number 8, Rockin' Rocket. Themed to Houston's basketball team, which, fun fact, the NBA Rockets were not named after Houston's history with NASA and space exploration. This innocent looking spinning ride really got spinning enough to make me dizzy. The bizarre lack of theming on the station platform combined with the nice views of the water off of the boardwalk make for a strange combination of visuals that seems to leave me dissatisfied. Though, I'm probably just bitter that the Rockets beat my Orlando Magic in the NBA games that I've attended, or, or there was that long ago NBA Finals too. Number 7, Hypno Spin. As a basic tilt-a-whirl, this ride makes sense as another basic boardwalk ride. Though, with the dizzying forces of many of these rides, I'm not sure something this dizzying needs to be here, as I'd prefer, like, a scrambler? Number 6, Jungle Bounce. Since I could ride this Frog Hopper Kitty Drop Tower, I greatly enjoyed it. Kitty Drop Towers of all shapes and sizes are my second favorite kitty ride behind Crazy Buses. Crazy Buses have the nostalgia that I loved them as a kid, but Kitty Drop Towers deliver with solid little hops or pops that feel decent and enjoyable. If this gimmick could be incorporated into a large drop tower, roller coaster, or other fly ride, I honestly feel that it would make for an awesome experience. The lack of neat visuals from this Kitty Drop Tower does make it not as good as it could be. Number 5, Kima Train. As far as popularity, this is the attraction at the Kima Boardwalk. I would not be surprised if the line gets long enough that you have to wait for the train to complete a second time around before being able to load. However, despite families loving trains, there really wasn't much to see on the train, except the restaurants and other things that you can see from walking around. There was a short Wild West indoor bit, but it was relatively dark and not too eventful. There is a tour guide narration towards the front of the train, 
but if you sit towards the back like I did, you won't be able to hear it. Since each train will likely be full, you can try to pick your row, but the front might be fairly full by the time you get to board. Number 4, Pharaoh's Fury. As an average swinging chip, it offered solid airtime on the apex of its swings. For me, this is always a unique and enjoyable experience. The downward swings, though, offered strong, positive G's that seemed to hurt my head, especially with the long time it took on its slow down cycle. The visuals being in the middle of the ride area, though, helped make a disorienting and scary ride, especially with the water out in the distance. I can clearly see why this ride gets a fair amount of screams. Number 3. Flare. A unique name for a fireball or lost in loop ride, but still one that fits comfortably within this ride's general theme. I'm not a huge fan of these rides since the height aspect normally gets to me, combined with the full rotations just not being that enjoyable. But Flare offered very few full rotations, at least on my visit, and seemed to focus more on almost going all the way over, which is my favorite part as it offers a nice mix of airtime and hang time. This cycle, combined with the unique visuals of the water to your side, made for an enjoyable ride. Number 2. Drop Zone There is a part of me that has this ride as the best ride at the Kingdom Boardwalk. The slow climb up, especially if you're looking out on the water or at Boardwalk Bullet while it goes, is calming and beautiful. Then. You're thrown down the drop at a pretty solid clip that has you out of your seat the entire time. There wasn't a scary drop feeling for me, as I had hoped, but the adrenaline rush of free falling that quickly was great. The quick stop at the bottom though did provide some positive G's as it jolted you to a stop. But given the relatively short nature of this tower, the amount of drop you get here is fantastic. Number 1. Boardwalk Bullet Despite its confusing name, this wooden gravity group creation offers two good drops, nice airtime on the hills, especially if the lap bar is loose, and a rather long layout of twists and turns. I feel this coaster is a little rough, has a bit too strong positive G's in its valleys, and has a pacing issue with how the chain lift catches to drag it over many hills. On my first ride, I was blown away with the strong elements this coaster throws at you. But after multiple re-rides, it really lost some of its magic. I have a full review on this coaster if you'd like to know more. Those are my top 10 rides at Landry's Kima Boardwalk. Overall, I was rather disappointed with this ride liner since few flat rides were unique and I have mixed feelings about its large coaster. I guess the point of the boardwalk is to eat at all of the restaurants, but I still feel there's a ride or two missing that could really make the difference in elevating this park. What are your thoughts on the Kima boardwalk? Is Houston's only wooden roller coaster worth a visit? Do you enjoy their flat ride or would you like to see better ones? Let me know, and as always, Kapkun Krap!